In this video, we're going to explore how to use an autocomplete text view to A, determine if the user has picked something from the list, and B, if the user has entered something that's not in the list to create a new one of those items. In other words, we're going to have a uh, Plain Places app like we have here with an autocomplete. I've made this autocomplete in a previous video, so I won't go over how to make the autocomplete itself, just how to handle this particular scenario. You notice if I start typing Magnolia, it's going to start to autocomplete and it's going to give me some suggestions on what the Magnolia is. The trick is that we want to be able to know which Magnolia the user picked here. And if the user types in a freehand Magnolia, like Brandon Magnolia, which doesn't exist, we want to know how to handle that so that we can maybe create a new plan. First of all, why is this important? Well, it allows us to consolidate the number of screens that we have in our app. A traditional approach might be to type in pine and then hit search. And then we get back a list of pines and we have to click one and maybe clicking one is going to take us back to the previous screen, something like that. The trick is there, you see, that's a lot of excessive clicks. Uh, going through those motions of typing, hitting search, selecting from a list, going back, that's a lot of clicks and clicks lead to, excessive clicks lead to uh, not an optimal user experience. It's a lot better to follow the Android quality principle of decide for me, but let me have the final say. As you'll see in the design principles, decide for me, but let me have the final say. That's what autocomplete is all about. Uh, also, simplify my li life, keep it brief, and only show what I need when I need it. All of these are common themes that we're going to see expressed by reducing our screen count, reducing complexity. Not only do we reduce screen, screen count with this kind of autocomplete text, but we, we also do away with the search button, which unclutters the UI. So, what we're going to do then is we're going to have a decision structure that looks like this. We type a plant name. We need to see if it exists. If it exists, select it. If it does not exist, create new. Okay, so I'm going to take a look in Eclipse then. And this uh, activity is called GPS a plant activity. And the autocomplete that we're using is called ACT plant name. And I'm already populating that with a list of plant names that we've seen uh, that we see here. And what I need to do then is I need to add a listener. I need to add a couple of listeners. And we need to think about the operations that we're going through here. First of all, uh, if I start typing a Magnolia, if I click, then that's going to be a click event. If I go to another uh, button or another widget on the screen, then that's going to be a case of I've lost focus. So these are two events that we want to pay attention to, on item click and on focus change. If the user happened to pick something without clicking, maybe by arrowing down, if I say Magnolia, arrow down and press enter, or some other way of, of choosing, uh, we want to be sure that we handle that as well. So we're going to take a look at another option called on item selected. Okay, so back to my uh, activity. What I need to do is I need to make a listener class. And the listener class has to implement several interfaces. So I'm going to call this class, put it down towards the bottom, we'll give myself plenty of white space here. Still within the main class, uh, we're just an inner class here. I'm going to say class, plant selected, implements, adapter view, dot on item selected listener, comma, adapter view, dot on item click listener. It's a little bit off screen, so let me refocus it. Okay. And actually, I'm going to take the uh, generic out of this one as well. Okay. And, and finally, comma, adapter view on focus change listener. Okay. Open curly and close curly. Okay, control shift O to organize imports. That will take care of the red lines under my, well, except adapt 
except the one I misspelled. That will take care of the red lines under my interfaces here. Now I have a red line under plant selected. So I'm going to hold control press 1 and choose add unimplemented methods. Because I have chosen to implement three method, uh, three interfaces rather, I have to implement the methods that those interfaces define. So on focus change, uh, on item click, and on item selected. Okay. With on item click, what I'm going to do is I am going to record the item that was selected. Okay, so if something was clicked, I know that it's something that's already in the predefined list, and that's important information I need to know about. Okay, so how do I get that item that was selected? Let's go back up and let's remember which uh, collection holds the data that's populating this autocomplete. And it's called plant names, but we have a small problem. Plant names is local to the onCreate method, which means it's only visible in the onCreate method. So what I'm going to do is hold Control and press 1, and I'm going to say convert local variable to field. And by the way, this is in Eclipse. If you're using Android Studio, uh, I'm sure there's a similar shortcut. I don't know what it is, but uh, this one is in Eclipse. To convert a local variable that's local within a method, uh, convert that to a field. So I scroll down now. And if we take a look at this on item click, it passes in a position. This position refers to the place inside the adapter that the user clicked. So I can easily find out what the user clicked by saying ACT plant name dot get adapter dot get item and then pass in that position. I'll hold down control and press one and I'm going to assign to new local variable. I actually don't like that. I'm going to control Z and take that back. I'm going to control 1 and I'm going to assign to a new field, which means it will be visible uh, throughout the entire class. So we're going to call this selected plant. And we're going to make that a string, which means I'm going to need to do a little bit of casting magic here. So control 1, uh, add cast. Okay, now that looks good to me. Now, one trick is that this selected plant is declared here within the inner class. I'm going to move that scope up to the enclosing class and paste and save. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to make that selected plant name rather. Okay, selected plant name and go to the top just a moment and selected plant name and save. Okay. At this point, everything compiles. Now, if we remember when this is going to get called, this is going to get called when the user actually clicks something from the list, which means that item has to exist in the database already. Position. Okay, now here's a trick. If I go into, here's how this all, is all going to work. If I say Magnolia and I click on and Magnolia, that's going to be held in that uh, that's going to be held in the uh, in the variable that I just defined. But if I say Brandon Magnolia, which doesn't exist, and I hit tab, that is not going to exist in this selected plant name variable. So that's where the whole trick happens here. The on focus change is called whenever we leave this autocomplete text. So here's where we can determine if we have a uh, new plant or a, uh, an existing plant. So what I need to do now is find out the text that is currently in the autocomplete. And I'll say ACT plant name dot get text dot to string Control 1 assigns a new local variable and we'll say current plant name. Okay, now I'm going to say if uh, current plant name dot is empty, but if you look closely, note I put the negation operator on there to say if it's not empty. If it's not empty and um, current plant name is uh, equals and we'll say selected plant name. Okay, and once again, I'm going to put the negation operator on there, say uh, not equal. So 
if the current plant name is not empty, if someone has typed something into that text field, and also it's not equal to the selected plant name that we would have found on an on click, uh, then we have a new plant. Okay, we have a new plant, start a new activity. So here we would say intent, uh, something or other equals new intent. For the moment, I'll just say int i equals 1 plus 1. Uh, just to give me a place where I can set a breakpoint, and we can watch that work. So I choose save, but here is where we would here is where we would start an activity to actually create a new plant. Or what we might do is we might just make a new plant object. Plant new plant equals new plant, and then we could say new plant dot uh, set common. And we could say current plant name. Uh, we'd have to do a little bit more math to, ch to chop it up by genus, species, and cultivar, but you get the idea. And from here, we could we could save the plant. We could use something like our um, DAO fetch plant names, plant service. So I could I could do something like uh, plant service dot. Um, do I have an insert method? Probably not here. It uh, looks like I don't have an insert method, but you get the idea. We could insert a new plant here because we know it's a new plant. Now, again, let's think logically about how this works. If we take a look, uh, we know that this is the text. If I were to tab off right now, this is the text that would be in that current plant name, where, on the other hand, if I typed in Magnolia and I clicked, that would be the text that's in the selected plant name. So this is how we're determining whether the user entered some new text or not. Now just a couple more things we need to do. We need to open our onCreate method where we've associated this uh, ACT plant name. We've created the ACT plant name. We need to tell it about this new class that we've created. So what we need to do is instantiate our listener class. So we called that what? Plant selected? Plant selected equals new plant selected. Okay, and now we can say, okay, ACT plant names. We got access to it. We're going to say ACT plant name dot set on, oops, set on item click listener. And we're going to say plant selected. And then we're going to say ACT plant name dot set on item selected listener. And again, plant selected. One more time, ACT plant name set on focus change listener. And again, plant selected. So what that means is that if we click an item, if we select an item, if we do focus change, uh, each time we're going to call on this class that I've just created called plant selected. So I save and I control M and then we're going to redeploy this out to the emulator and we're going to let the debugger run and we're going to see what happens. I'll pause as it might take just a moment for that emulator to come. And the emulator's up, so let's test our hypothesis. I'm going to type in Magnolia and I'll click on An and Magnolia. Now let's see, what is in selected plant? Uh, well, I don't have a whole lot going on here. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this portion of a line in Control shift i which is going to show me that selected plant will be equal to the text and magnolia. Remember that, selected plant name and magnolia, and I choose play. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab off of this, and that's going to call the on focus change. Now on focus change, it's going to look not at what was clicked, but what is currently in that field. And so if we take a look at current plant name, that should also be Ann Magnolia. Ann Magnolia. The two match. And so this indicates that we uh, do not have a new plant. We have an existing plant, so it should skip our new plant logic. And I press play. Now let's go back one more time. And... Um, Okay, a little focus magic there. Let's go back one more time, and now I'm going to switch it to, say, Brandon Magnolia, which I'm just making up. I'm going to tab, which is going to cause a focus lost. Okay, I tab, and what's the current plant name? 
current plant name is Brandon Magnolia. Okay, what's the name of the last plant that was clicked? The last plant that was clicked, if I highlight over here, Control Shift I, and Magnolia. So notice that we can recognize that what's currently in that autocomplete text is different from what was clicked last, and therefore we have a brand new plant. And now we're going to enter our new plant logic where what we could do here is, is open a new activity. And again, for the sake of brevity, I won't go through actually creating that activity. But you see we're in a place now where we could take some action like insert into the database or something like that, this brand new plant. Now, at this point, it feels like we've, we've taken care of most of the scenarios that we could have. Uh, but we do need to consider one more very carefully. And this one bit me before. So don't do what I did. Uh, we're relying here on this thing called selected plant name. And selected plant name is a, an, an attribute or a variable, uh, a, a member variable if you want to call it, or a field. In other words, it's something that's globally visible throughout this entire class. Now, the trick is for these things that are globally visible, we have to set them uh, we have to we have to be aware of changing screen orientation. So what we need is an on save, whoops, on save instance state and on restore instance state. But we have to be especially careful with this one. You see, right now I'm not currently implementing either of those methods. So I'm going to go ahead and implement the method. I'm going to have Eclipse help me out. I'm going to say on save, control space, on save instance state. We'll override that. And then on restore, control space, on restore instance state, we'll override this. What it means is if we didn't do this save and restore instance state, when we tilt the phone, when we do our, uh, in the emulator, control F11 and we switch the orientation, what would happen is we would essentially lose the information that's in that variable called selected plant name. So we have, to change, we have to be able to handle screen orientation changes. As you see, when I control F11, the orientation of this uh, emulator changes and then the, the screen changes to match. We have to be able to handle uh, the changes in orientation because the default behavior is that it would clean out that variable. Okay, so control M and we have our on save instance state and on restore instance state methods. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, out state and then we'll say dot uh, put string and we'll say key we'll say uh, selected plant name and then value we're gonna say selected plant name there we go okay uh, I'm gonna control one over selected plant name and we're gonna say extract to constant. It's always a good idea to do that. Okay, now the rest, that gets called right before the screen orientation changes. So that gives us an opportunity to save any information that we want. The on restore instance state gets called after the screen orientation has changed. So we can retrieve anything that we put in on the save instance state. So I'm gonna say save instance state, and I'm gonna say get string, and I'm going to pass in that same key selected plant name. Okay. And I am going to assign it to selected plant name. And now we're all good. Here's the important part. You see, we have a super call here and we have to keep that super call. It's very important. We have to do this assignment before the super call. Don't do the assignment after the super call. This is the one that burnt me once. And I ended up staying up very late trying to figure out the issue. Uh, the reason is when you call that super restore instance state, it invokes this on focus change. So we have to make sure that we have, we have recalled or we have restored the value into this selected plant name before on focus change gets called. And on focus change will get called when the super on restore instance state is called. So in this case, let me put a comment to this effect. We must reassign the, uh, we'll call it field or attribute selected plant name before calling super because calling super will 
cause on focus change to be invoked. So hopefully that's pretty clear. At this point, we have a uh, fairly good system working. Uh, I can save this and redeploy it, but you'll see that it will work okay. So I'm going to type Anne Magnolia. I'm going to click. That's going to set the selected plant name. Go ahead and play through that. Now I'm going to do an orientation change with Control F11. It will re-render the page. Okay. And now I'm going to tab off of plant name without clicking anything. I'm just taking, hitting a tab. And if all works well, current plant name should equal the selected plant name because we did that trick with the save instance date, restore instance date. So let's see, current plant name and Magnolia. And let's see what selected plant name. I will highlight, control shift I. And sure enough, it's still and Magnolia. It would be blank if we didn't do that trick I just did with save instance state and restore instance state. So I, what I'm going to do now, control M so we can see focus on this. We know that this is not a new plant. This is a plant that we have selected from the predefined list. So it should skip this chunk of logic right here. Sure enough, it skips and everything works as expected. So I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, again, the goal is not just uh, that we are using an autocomplete, but we're uncomplicating the user's view. We no longer need the search button. We simply pre-populate the autocomplete with all the possible results. And then we determine whether the user picked one of those results or if the user, um, if the user has entered a new result. And if, we, we did see that on the on item click, we could get the exact item that the user clicked. And then on the on, so if we wanted to say, do some math based on that and Magnolia, there we go. Where on the on focus change, we could see uh, if the user had entered something different since the user last clicked something. So we remove the search button. We also remove an entire screen from our application. And that brings us a lot closer to the Android design principles of enchant me, simplify my life, and make me amazing. So I hope this was helpful to you, and I hope it helps to make your own apps more simple, more amazing, and more enchanting. Um, I always welcome your feedback. Let me know if you like what you saw or if there's something else that you'd like to see. Thank you.